Hey everyone, Duke Nuka 3 d here with another mask to review in my collection, and today I have one of the masks that I recently unboxed a little while ago, and that is my Chinese People's Liberation Army Type 69 gas mask. Uh, a little quick backstory on this, not the history, but just this is, again, I was not expecting, I was not actually expecting to get this mask in that package that Hype sent. It was pretty much... Again, I was just anticipating getting the carrier, and he uh, it was just totally unprecedented that I was getting an entire Type 69 kit. So again, very thankful for that, but without further ado, on to the history. The Type 69 is one of those weird Chinese masks that tends to try and think outside the box, however, it doesn't really get too far. Uh, the mask was uh, introduced, as the name would suggest, around 1969 as a intended replacement for the older Type 64 and Type 65 masks, as the Type 65, the Chinese quickly realized that having a cheek filter design like the Type 65 was not the best idea. However, the Type 69 alongside the 64 and the 65 remained in service even until today where it is still used as a training mask. Uh, the Type 69's whole goal was to be a lightweight, compact, 40 millimeter versatile mask similar to the Soviet PMG and the American M9 series field protective masks. They are, they seem to uh, borrow aspects of both, to be quite honest with you. Most notably the triangular lenses, which are very unique for a Chinese mask design because most Chinese masks were either using the round Soviet style lenses or the Japanese Navy gas mask style lenses with the Type 65 mask. However, this mask was a sort of a step away from the normal Chinese influence designs and is sort of a mishmash of both American and Soviet design influence. Uh, there really isn't too much else to say about that. It is one of the very few Chinese masks that have a separate voice diaphragm and outlet valve assembly uh, other than the Type, 65, uh, type 64A. Um, and I can't really think of too many other masks uh, that China has developed that do use a uh, separate inlet and outlet, I mean, voice diaphragm and outlet assembly, other than a few current masks with their, which they're currently fielding, but I do not know whether they've adopted or not the FMJ09 series, but enough on that. As I mentioned before, these are still well in use today, as far as I know, at least for training. I have seen photos of these in use with the PLA, but whether or not uh, they're still current issue or not is debatable. But enough further ado, let's get into the kit. First thing to discuss is this carrier. This is by far the smallest gas mask carrier that I've ever handled. It is basically just, this is even smaller than AK drum mag pouches, I would, would be willing to bet. It has a long, uh, very durable, again, the, the shoulder strap is the most durable component of these Chinese carriers, made out of canvas. It's a nice uh, little thin shoulder strap here, about the thickness of a PMG carrier. Uh, it's non-removable, but is adjustable. Uh, you have no waist strap, but you do have a couple of belt loops to secure it to your field equipment. And other than that, there is nothing else to see externally, other than the two very aesthetic um, rubber grommet and Bakelite stud fasteners, which I do so love. And this is actually a very rare carrier, given the fact that it does use these earlier fasteners and not the more common Velcro fasteners that they used later on in like the 70s or 80s. To give you an idea of the size of this carrier, I have here the, uh, the carrier for my Type 64B, and as you can see by comparison, it is at least one third the size, or at least half the size. So, very small carrier. Uh, enough about the externals, let's get onto the interior, opening up these studs. There really is nothing to see on the inside. There is the, of course, the two fabric patches that retain the, the studs in place. And on the very, very bottom, you have another white cotton pouch, which is not to retain a filter, but is to retain the spare voice membranes and has another inspection stamp on here or possibly a date uh, that says 69 right there or 68, I, probably 69 or so because obviously the mask is uh, type 69. So, but if that's, if that's the case, this is a very early dated carrier. So that's, that's very interesting. Uh, more on to this, I erroneously said that these were anti-fog inserts in my unboxing just because I was excited and I wasn't really thinking clearly, And I, but I can assure you that these are, in fact, spare voice membranes for the mask. Uh, I'm more, more than confident to say that they are spare voice membranes, but if, if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me. Get those inside the carrier here. Next up is the canister. Again, the Chinese have a, a very... Uh, 
they have a penchant for making masks very, very small that can fit into very tight packages. And this canister is no exception, being at least, uh, it, it's slightly smaller than a, like a normal Soviet GP5 or EO16, or, or I mean EO65, I don't, I don't know what the designation is off the top of my head, but it's a very small canister for a drum canister, made entirely out of plastic. Uh, has a screw off top there. You can look inside. You can see some. There is metal on the inside for the filtering materials, uh, and then pulling off the plug on the bottom, which has a number 12 on it, has a lot number, I would assume. You can see more metal, and looking past that, or hopefully you can see the little uh, perforations in the metal for the air to come in. And I do not know if these filters are safe. I doubt they are. I mean, by you know, you know your standards, I, I personally don't give a shit what I breathe through. I breathe through literally everything I get. So these these more than likely have asbestos, but whatever. It's not really a big concern to me because asbestos is kind of a, a moot point. Now onto the mask itself, which again, very, very PMG influenced. Um, you can see that the rubber is a very uh, deep gray hue. It's not, it's not the, uh, the Soviet white style like my Type 64 here. It is considerably darker. Um, you can see it has the cutouts in the hood for, uh, I guess, ventilation or as a sort of pseudo harness system, very similar to the PMG. Um, but uh, as you can see, it doesn't come up all that well on the head. It may just be my mannequin head here. I actually haven't tried this on my head yet, but uh, it does not go down all the way as far as like a Soviet hood would go. Um, and you can see the small 40 millimeter inlet on the side there that is uh, molded into the mask. And you can see the triangular lenses. Again, a very unique feature for Chinese masks given that they try to either copy the Soviet or the Japanese style lenses. Uh, and these are distinctly American in their shape and structure. Uh, you can see the voice diaphragm assembly on the front there, and like the uh, like the rest of the Chinese masks, again, it's still a little bit wet from when I was washing all the bloom off of this mask. Uh, it is made out of a green rubber material, and I actually have not figured out how to remove this. It seems to be tensioned around the edges and held in by something, but uh, I'm not going to bother with it for now because it's it's not in any dire condition for need of cleaning. It's fine as it is, and I don't need to remove it, so I'll just leave it be for now. And again, that just screws back on. And then below there, you have one of these Soviet-style exhale valves. Again, a little bit sopping wet just because I washed this mask recently and all that. And really nothing to see there. And I will remove it off of the head so you can see the interior, hopefully without damaging anything because this hood is very tight. And I will invert the hood here to show off the interior. And you can see the one advantage it does have over the PMG is that uh, I might make a clone comparison video between this mask and the PMG, given that this is uh, directly influenced off of it. But the main advantage that this mask has with its deflector system is it is not glued in. On the PMG, the deflector system is entirely glued in place. And on this one, it is, in fact, injection molded. And it uses a portion of the diaphragm angle tube assembly uh, as an air channel to have the air come in, splash over this lens, and then the air would pass through. Uh, this channel here and then over through the other deflector and onto the other lens. So it does what it needs to. And you can also see, again, the Soviet initial outlet valve there, the Soviet style valve inside there. And then you can see the voice diaphragm throughout the back and really nothing else to see aside from that. Uh, not the best gas mask design in terms of its, con well, I, want to, I don't want to say construction because it's very well made, but you know, there's, there's some things I like about it and some things I don't, but I'm, again, I'm very, very thankful to have this, especially given that it was completely free to me. So thanks again. And if you have any, I'll be sure to be reviewing more masks very soon. I still have one more to do out of that package I got. So uh, if you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, drop them down in the comments below. I'm Duke New 3D, and I'll see you all later.